Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Forza Horizon 5 to take a look at a yet another new paid DLC car pack with four new cars coming to the game as part of the latest American Automotive update. So to get hold of this brand new car pack, the easiest way is to go to any festival or house location in the game, go to the buy and sell tab, go to car packs, and then here you should have the American Automotive car pack consisting of the four brand new vehicles, um, the 2020 Chevrolet Silverado LT Trail Boss, whatever that is, the 2023 Zinger 21C, which is probably the one I'm most excited for, the 2017 Celine S7 LM, which happens to be in motorsport and you can drive for free, and the 1961 Deberti Ford Econoline shop rod. As well as the car pack, this update brings with it four new sprint routes. Um, this one, the Linea Costera sprint, the Aerodromo sprint, the Marigold sprint, and the Vista Del Mar Sprint, which are the routes you're going to be seeing these cars running on in the background. Let's start with the Linea Costera Sprint in the Chevy pickup truck to get it out of the way straight away as it's of no interest to me whatsoever. I have no idea what this thing is, so I did a quick search, other than it being a truck of course, and it would appear the Trail Boss is essentially an ultimately off-roodified version of any given Chevrolet truck. This one in particular produces 420 horsepower and 624 torques from a 6.2 litre V8 engine, because of course it does, and is of course also all-wheel drive, and incredibly heavy at well over 2,000 kilos in weight, putting it in C-Class at 561 pi from standard here in Forza. On this sprint route though, I was surprised it didn't handle worse than it actually did, and it slowed down a lot faster than I expected into the corners as well. On a couple of occasions I thought I'd braked way too late and I was going into the wall for sure, um, but somehow it did slow down and make those corners. Despite saying all of that though, it's not exactly great to drive from standard being a truck, it's just slightly better than I thought it might be. The Chevy doesn't have much in the way of manufacturer paint options either. It comes in, well, red, darker red, brown, um, the red that I've got it in, and a sort of greyy blue colour. So you can see why I've gone for the bright red on this one. In terms of other customization and upgrades, it does have a few interesting options actually. It has a front bumper which adds all of the lights in the world, which is absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to put that on, and the two usual Forza truck bed options, I will also put that one on, um, as well as three engine swaps, all of which are of course also V8, being an American truck. Um, you can also rear-wheel drive swap it if you want to ruin it, twin turbo it, or supercharge it. Otherwise it is all pretty much as you might expect. Um, it's actually got the tyre profile creasy things that the Bronco didn't. What you may notice though is that there are 9 plus new rims, because they've added some new wheels. And given that they now tell us which ones are actually new, I will quickly see if we can find them. Um, we've got these ones. Um, but yeah, as I said um, when I kind of first announced that there were new wheels coming in this update, I don't really see the point because we already have more than enough of them. There only seems to be one set in there. And there should be nine plus wheel options in here. Aha! So we have that one, that one, that one, that one. They're all HREs basically, um, but there you go. That's what they look like on an pickup truck. Other than that though, it's all kind of as you'd expect with the usual engine upgrades, platform and handling upgrades, and gearboxy drivetrain upgrades. So with the Chevy out of the way, we head to the Aerodromo Sprint in the Deberti van. In reality, I'm sure this is a cool one-off custom vehicle um, to kind of see, but it's not really my sort of thing to drive, and Forza in particular, and I'm doubtful of its usefulness in this game at being good for anything. Anyway, it's essentially a modified Ford, which for some reason has a seat in the back with nowhere for the passenger to put their legs, and a huge great engine inside it, which doesn't sound too healthy. Strangely, on the website, Forza says um, that this engine is a 5.8 litre 
Coyote engine, but in-game its displacement is nearly an entire litre smaller than that. However big the engine is though, or should be, in-game it produces 850 horsepower and 1039 torques, and sends all of those to the rear wheels, which as you can imagine leaves a lot of traction to be desired when you drive it. It spins its wheels, it slides, it's terrifying, and it sort of rears up onto its back wheels if you accelerate, because it's definitely not designed to have this much power. You can probably even see this and how difficult it was to drive, even from the interior view in the replay here. So despite all of that power, because it spins it all up and it doesn't really go anywhere and it's a death trap to drive, if you're not already killed by the fact there's an engine inside it, um, it's only an A-Class at 799 PI from standard. This being a one-off sort of custom -y vehicle doesn't actually have any manufacturer colours other than the one that's on it. In terms of aero and appearance, we just have the usual Forza aero, including the hatchbacky rear wing, which looks absolutely horrendous. Um, we have some engine swaps, a V8, a V10, another V8, another V8, and a V12. If you want to engine swap something that's essentially already been engine swapped. You can also all-wheel drive swap it, which is probably a good idea to not crash it quite so often, and give it more power for some reason, which I am not going to do. Other than that though, it is all kind of as you'd expect. There's all of those new wheels that I showed you on the Chevy. Um, apparently I haven't scrolled through them all, so I should probably do that to get rid of these clicky tag things. Um, but then that's kind of everything. Um, it has your usual sort of engine upgrades, but not terribly many of them. Um, some platform and handling bits, and some drivetrain options. So, the two sort of vans and trucks and strange things out of the way. Next, we have, well, basically a racing car, and then, well, a supercar slash hypercar. So, this one is um, the Celine S7LM, which I've taken to the brand new Marigold Sprint. Now, normally this would be the car I'd be most interested in in this pack, um, but as I alluded to earlier, there is one major thing wrong with this car. And that's the fact it's also coming to Forza Motorsport in the next update as a free edition. So, even more reason to not be in a paid pack on Horizon then. So, yeah, it really shouldn't be given this pack's $3.99 and you can drive it for free in another game that's also by sort of the same people. Anyway, once you get past that, the car itself is brilliantly crazy, producing a rather exact 1,000 horsepower and 1,153 torques from a 7-litre twin-turbo V8 engine. All of that is sent through the rear wheels as well, so you'd imagine it would be quite deadly to drive. Um, to counter this, however, it has all of the downforces in the world, so it's actually incredibly stable, apart from out of the very slow turns. Allegedly, it has so many downforces that it could in fact drive upside down in a tunnel. I'm not sure anyone's ever going to try that, but apparently it will. On this Marigold Sprint, though, which does in fact have many fields of Marigolds along it, so I can see where the name came from, the Celine was insane to drive. High speed, high downforce, like I say, a few low speed corners it would step out a little bit if you got on the power very um, early out of the corners, um, but at high speed it was pretty incredible, and I can actually imagine it in that tunnel. And you won't be surprised to know then that it's in S2 class at 918 PI from standard. Again with the Celine being a racing car, it doesn't have more than one manufacturer colour. It does though have paint groups, which as you might imagine are, well, that bit, which I think actually looks pretty incredible in the orange. Kind of reminds me of the RX-7 from Fast and Furious somehow. Um, and group two is that middle bit and edge bit. Um, it's kind of a shame you don't have the bit that was sort of yellow pinstripes before, um, if I show you it, um, as another third paint group option. Um, but anyway, you have been disconnected. Um, I think that looks amazing like that, so I am going to do that. In terms of other customization and upgrades, it does have a couple of options actually. Um, you may notice it has no front aero options, but it does have two Celine wing options. One to sort of make it, well, just that lower part, that sort of ducktail bit, 
and one to remove it completely, making it more like the standard S7. There's no Forza Aero on the front or rear, though, which is, well, actually good to see, but I'm not going to take that wing off, because you will have a massive crash if you remove any downforce from this thing. Um, you can also, if you really want to, change it to a racing V12, um, or all-wheel drive convert it, or both, if you want to ruin it in either or both of those ways. Apart from that, it's kind of as you'd expect, there's rear track width. Interestingly, there's only tyre width for the rear tyres, you can't increase the width of the front ones. Um, it's also... okay, it's on semi-slicks from standard, that makes sense. And it has all of the, well, some of the usual engine upgrades, platform and handling upgrades, and drivetrain upgrades that you might expect. And finally, we head to the Vista del Mar Sprint in the maddest car here. And also, given that two of the other vehicles are quite boring, and one shouldn't be in the paid pack in the first place, probably the only thing that's actually worth buying this pack for, the Zinger 21C. You may have noticed that this car looks quite different to most other hypercars and supercars, and that's because this 3D printed car um, has one seat behind the other in a sort of tandem-y layout, um, rather than the traditional two-seater layout that you'd get in most other cars, which allows for this much bigger flat section on either side of the cabin and those much bigger increased size air intakes towards the rear of those sections. And not only that, but it's incredibly fast, producing 1,230 horsepower and 1,000 torques, whilst weighing a not too heavy 1,365 kilos despite its all-wheel drive system, which puts it right at the top of S2 class at 998 pi from standard. No surprise then that it's been breaking track records all over the world, this thing. Even compared to the Celine, this thing felt incredibly fast. So confidence-inspiring, in fact, that as you saw, I nearly put it in a wall in one corner, because I kind of thought it would make it. Somehow, though, it did stop in time and sort of made the corner, just not in the best way, really. Apart from that slight scare, though, I don't think it ever dropped below 60 miles per hour, which is kind of funny, given that most speed limits in the US are 55. So finally, the Zinger is a car that does have some manufacturer options, which we haven't seen since the first vehicle we looked at today, the Chevrolet. Unfortunately, though, the only actual interesting one is the blue. Apart from that, you have a silver or a, a white. So I think we should find something else. That's what I put on the Celine. So maybe we should go for a yellow or a purple. Hang on. That's the colour I was going to paint it in, but unfortunately you can't save colours in Forza. So to find the purple that I put on everything, I have to go on a car that has it on, go into repaint it, click on the colour, click off the colour, go back to the car that I want to paint and then paint it. So here we are with it painted. As the Zinger is already quite so mad though, um, there's not a lot you can do with it. As you might notice, aero and appearance isn't there at all. Um, you can rear-wheel drive swap it, but there are no engine swaps. You can put more better tyre compounds on it. Um, it's already got semi-slicks from standard, so there's not even a lot you can do there. You can, of course, do wheels and front rim size, but not rear for some reason. Um, other than that, though, you've got a few drivetrain options. Platform and handling gives you off-road and drift suspension, because apparently it's already on race. And bigger twin turbos? Oh no, not bigger, just with anti-lag for some reason. And that is going to be all for a first look at the cars themselves in this pack, but before we conclude the video, I would kind of like to briefly address these paid packs. Um, to start with, I wasn't entirely against them to be honest. We had already kind of been given everything that we were promised when we bought the game, if we bought the Ultimate Edition, all the add-ons and stuff, and given the longer lifespan of recent Forza Horizon games, they did need some way of bringing the money in until the next game comes out. Okay, so we kind of understand why they've done it. Fine, okay. We may not all agree with that, but equally we don't have to buy the pack if we don't want the cars. For the first car pack, the Horizon Racing car pack, with four new to Forza cars in it, priced at just $3.99, I was happy to pay for that. 
But then, two months later, the Italian Exotics pack arrives, which has more cars in it, but's priced at the more expensive $7.99, here in the UK at least. Okay, still not too bad, but then another two months later, they released the Super Speed car pack with four cars for $3.99. Okay, so maybe they're going to start releasing these every other month. Starts to seem like a little bit much, maybe. But, okay, every other month is one thing. But then only one month after that pack, we get the introduction of this American Automotive pack for another $3.99. And also the introduction of car vouchers at the same time, which honestly at this point just feels a bit greedy. It is getting quite ridiculous to be honest. Um, but anyway, those are a separate issue. Back to the car packs. Um, these have now cost nearly £20 combined which is around the quarter of what the Ultimate or whatever the expensive edition of the game cost in the first place. So let's just imagine we get a $3.99 pack every month for the rest of this game's lifespan, which could very possibly be two more years. That's 24 packs at $3.99 each, which is over £90, which at that point is more than the game itself cost with all of the add-ons to begin with, just to get some cars, many of which should already have been in the game, for example, the one that's free to drive in motorsport in this pack, the Celine, um, and they always fill it out with cars that aren't that interesting, so really the only one in this pack that I would pay money for is that Zinger. Although, obviously I did buy the pack, but anyway. <laughs> I, I would say more like every three months would be a little bit better, but ideally if they're going to charge for cars, I would really only expect these to be more like every five or six months, with kind of more of these new cars as free playlist prizes and less of them in paid packs. Particularly things like, for example, the Celine that shouldn't be charged for because it is in the motorsport game for free. So things like that should be in the playlists and then they should release the packs less often every five or six months if they're indeed going to carry on releasing them. Anyway, short rant about car packs over. Um, that is going to bring an end to today's video. I have actually really enjoyed driving well, most of these cars, despite the few issues that I do have with them and with the packs in general. Um, the Chevy truck I'm still not all that interested in, but it did drive slightly better than I expected. Has some cool options with those light bars and stuff on the front. Um, the Ford Econoline van is absolutely mad. I was actually quite surprised by how much I enjoyed that thing. So I am kind of glad that I've got hold of that one and kind of makes it a little bit more worthwhile, I suppose. The Celine I still maintain should not be in a paid pack because we can drive it for free in motorsport in the update next week. And the Zinger was crazy entirely mad as I expected. So for this and the Ford van, I would say it probably was worth getting hold of the pack. Um, but yeah, like I say, they really need to be releasing these far less often if they're going to be expecting us to, well, keep buying these. Um, but anyway, do let me know what you think of this car pack and of the whole situation with car packs in general. But for today's video, taking a look at these four brand new vehicles, that is going to be all. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next one very soon. Mm -hmm.